since most consumer level cameras use SD cards, we're gonna go over what all the numbers and symbols mean on those cards to help you understand which one will be the best one for you to choose to shoot video with your camera. But if you have a camera that does not use an SD card, let me know what kind of camera it is down in the comments and I can help you out with what will be the best one for your camera for shooting videos, as well as see what kind of memory card I should shoot a video on next. And the first thing to pay attention to is whether the card says SDHC or SDXC. What's different between these is the type of filing system which affect the size capacity of the card. SDHC cards max out at 32 gigabytes of storage and anything over that will be an SDXC card for which you can find up to two terabytes now. And something to be aware of with the SDHC cards is that the filing system can result in your video files being cut into multiple smaller videos or even stopping the video recording automatically once it reaches a certain gigabyte threshold. Although this isn't as common on newer cameras, I do suggest going with an SDXC card with at least 64 gigabytes of storage to avoid that issue. And if you are having issues with your camera automatically stopping video recordings, I have another video that will help you troubleshoot what the problem may be. Next up are the numbers on the top left which represent the maximum read and write speeds of the card. If you're looking at a card with only one number there, then you're looking at the maximum read speed of the card. Now when it comes to video, neither of these numbers actually matter, but before I tell you why, there's something we need to understand first. 8 bits equals 1 byte, and therefore 8 megabits equals 1 megabyte. Megabits, little b, megabytes, big b. And it's important to know the difference here because when it comes to figuring out which card you need, camera manufacturers typically list the video recording speeds in megabits per second. So when you see a write speed up to 600 megabits per second on the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II, don't freak out thinking, I can't find a card that has a 600 on it because that 600 megabits, little b, equates to 75 megabytes, big B. So looking back to the SD card that displays the maximum read and write speeds as 280, and 150 megabytes per second might make you think that that card is fast enough for that ZV-E10 Mark II because that camera's maximum recording speed is 75 megabytes per second. But that's not quite the case either. We can actually completely ignore those numbers when it comes to video because those are the maximum achievable read and write speeds, which means they can only do those speeds for a short amount of time. Those speeds would come into play for being able to do burst photo shooting without running into buffering issues. But since shooting video is a steady stream of data, what we care about is the minimum sustained write speed of the card because if the sustained speed drops below the video's bitrate, that can result in dropped frames from your video. The rest of the numbers on the right side of the card represent the speed class ratings of the card, which will let you know which one you'll need based on your camera's recording bitrate. If the card has a 10 with a C around it, this is an older class 10 rating that represents a minimum sustained write speed of at least 10 megabytes per second. Then there's a U with either a 1 or a 3 in it, and this represents a minimum write speed of 10 megabytes per second for the U1 card and 30 megabytes per second for the U3 card. So the U1 and the C10 basically mean the same thing, except that the U represents a memory card that has a UHS-1 or a UHS-2 bus. UHS-2 cards have a second row of pins that allows for much faster read and write speeds than UHS-1 cards, but if your camera doesn't have the UHS-2 capability, it'll simply revert to the UHS-1 speeds when used with that camera, so don't feel like you need to go out and just get the fastest memory card you can find because you'll just be wasting your money and getting the same speeds as a lower level card. And finally, that brings us to the number that we care the most about for video and that is the V speed ratings on the cards. You'll find cards rated at V30, V60, and V90, representing minimum sustained write speeds of 30, 60, and 90 megabytes per second, respectively. So to be able to shoot at the highest mode of the ZV-E10 Mark II of 600 megabits per second, which equates to that 75 megabytes per second, we would need to get a V90 card, since a V60 card only guarantees up to 60 megabytes per second. And as you can imagine, those higher speed rated cards cards are going to start costing significantly more than the lower speed cards at the same size capacity, which is represented by the largest number on the memory card. And how much capacity you're going to need is really going to depend on the type of camera you're using, as well as how long you plan on recording before offloading that footage onto a computer. Then you have to consider that those high bitrate speeds are going to fill up space nearly three times as fast, so then you'll probably want to go with the higher capacity, like 256 gigabytes or even 512, which can run you up to $500 depending on the 
the brand that you get. And I have links in the description for all kinds of various cards that I've used on my cameras that haven't given me any issues. But if you have any questions about specific card suggestions for your camera, let me know down there in the comments and I'll help you out there. But if this video was helpful, please help me out by just hitting that like button. Subscribe for more filmmaking content because I have a lot of stuff on the channel that will help you out there. And hopefully, I'll see you soon.